it's it's the Latin rapper ad libitum. A writer. You know, no, it's like ad lib, but it's in Latin ad libitum. <laughs> Man, I'm glad we spent so long on that one. <laughs> Alrighty, we're back. Uh, another week, another six wines. Uh, we're into the. We've stopped putting numbers on the episodes. That's how many of these we've done, and I'm still bloody hopeless at it. But looking forward to doing some more. As always, if you want to get 10% off any of the wines that we're tasting today, there is a discount code in the Discord channel that's in the link. I don't know where I'm pointing at, but I'm on a video right now, so down here. Uh, follow through to the Discord channel, put in the code, get 10% off it sometimes, always. Have a good time. Uh, wine. First wine of the lineup we have. Oh, gorgeous, pretty, very lush, stone fruity, super white nectarine and peach and all that kind of thing. Bubbling. Wait, this has got bubbles in it. You cheeky man, Lockie. This, this is a sparkling wine. We've got a sparkling wine. We never have sparkling wines on the show. That's exciting. It's not a sparkling wine. Fuck! <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. I like it. Really thin, crispy, like great, like quartzy acidity. Love the flavor, that kind of really chilled, awesome stone fruity thing. Lifted aromatic, like that is that is definitely an aromatic grape variety, whether it's Riesling or Musket, I don't know, but um, uh, I'm kind of digging it. Yeah, great way to start out. Uh, a little bit sweet. Again, as is the case with a lot of these white wines, I think if they were colder, they'd be better, but that's cool. I'm thinking I'm going to go with Riesling just because it's got this it's got this nice sweetness to it, but also a little bit of that. The only thing that's making me hesitant, it doesn't have quite as much saline as I'm used to finding in a bit of Riesling, but we'll see what happens. Um, so I'm going to take a stab that this is Kvert's Tram uh, and I'd hope around about 25 bucks and I'd grab 12 bottles. I'm a massive fan of Kvert's. I'm a massive fan of aromatic whites uh, with this waxy style texture that aren't just too weighty. These are great everyday wines. Yeah, I think this is an awesome wine. Um, so yeah, very, very good stuff. Number two, we have a pretty dense looking red. Whoa, okay. You remember when you were doing drama if you went to a state school in Australia and it was in a demountable and you walked into the demountable and it smelled like feet? This wine kind of smells like that. The Crimson Crusader. Bacon. I'll be making bacon. It smells like this wine. It smells like a BLT. Sour grape, tanniny, not super hot, uh, which I'm, if, if this had that sort of like real heat of red wine at the back end, it would be doing way too much for me. Confectionery, really raspberry, strawberry kind of vibes. Nice like kind of green stemmy herbaceousness as well. Brilliant tannin profile, brilliant palate, slippery, broad. Oh, Tempranillo, I've guessed it all the time and it never is, but that means that I'm due. I also can't spell it. That looks like armadillo with a T at the start of it. Um, but it's a definitely a bloody whirlwind, whatever it is. I, I don't really know. I would hazard a guess it's probably a red grape variety that's prone to uh, reduction. So Syrah, Merlot, perhaps, Dolcetto, maybe, but probably more so Syrah. Although that, that nose, that aromatic profile, uh, really distracts um, for me. So I'd hope that that comes in around about 25 bucks and I'd buy one glass. 28, 28 bucks and give me three bottles of it, please. And thank you. All right, wine number three. I was saying to Lockie before we started shooting that I'm not even gonna bother tasting this one because I know it's a Chardonnay, I know it's gonna be $35 and I'll have four bottles of it, thank you. It's not Chardonnay. <laughs> We've got wine number three, another quite golden hued uh, white wine. Yes, yeah, Chablis for me. It's got that kind of vibe. Like lemongrassy, citrusy, sweet on the nose. Nah, it's Chardonnay. I was right, I should have stuck with my gut. All right, the thing that misled me is it doesn't smell particularly oaky or anything on the nose, but it does have the creaminess, the butteriness to it. Uh, there's not a lot of heavy oak on it. Oh, I'd love to see this cold. Oh, I'd love some oysters right now. Oh, I'd love to be on a yacht right now. Oh, there's a lot of things I'd like to be doing right now, but this will take me as close as I can get to that. Oh, it smells fantastic. Um, honestly, it smells like uh, really uh, gorgeously uh, bassinaged, textural white wine. Could be Fiano, could be Vermentino. Beautiful, could be even Chardonnay. Could be like a really cool Batinage Chardonnay. I love the tang here, I love the laziness. But every time I say it's Chablis, it's probably gonna be some like $25 Italian Greer from sometimes always, because that's what they do. I said I wanted four, no one guesses four. I'm gonna say I need six bottles of it. Cool, glad to be back on the right side of history.
four. A bit more yellow than the last. A bit stinky. Oh yeah, okay. Still in that awesome textural white category, um, vibing on Fiano right now uh, in a big way. It's clear and it doesn't look natty. That smells awful. That is the worst smelling wine we've had on the show. It's a bit dog pooey, a bit nappy, nappy. Mm, yeah, it's got a bit of a pong to it. Oh, that's a bit upsetting. Oh well, pretty, pretty mute. Pretty dull. The acid's good, the texture's nice, but there's nothing really flavoursome to go along with it. One glass, yuck. Nah, that ain't it. No, nope, 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 no, bad. No, bad. Don't care, not into it. Sorry, that's the worst wine we've had on the show. Oh, that's gorgeous. That's brilliant. Yummy. Honestly, it tastes like Clear Valley Fiano, um, or really, really white Fiano. Um, I'd be surprised if it's not that, uh, to be honest. And I'm gonna go around about 30 bucks. Uh, I'm gonna grab 12 bottles. Love. Love wines like this. That reductive thing is blowing off as well. It's really nice and fragrant and kind of grassy and herbaceous now, which is great. That's exactly what you want from reduction. You want it to be there for a bit and just go beep, because then you know that this one's got a bit of energy and vitality to it. Chalky, reductive boy. But yeah, I'll grab, I'll grab two bottles, I reckon. Number five. A lot more golden. All right, wine <laughs> number five. All right, let's go. We're back on the horse. All right, you, you smell deliberate at least. We're getting golden, more golden hued as we go along here. Wow, okay. So this is this is actually really interesting. So this is a um, uh, batonaged, probably Chardonnay, uh, barrel fermented as well. So we've got that really nice component of oak just kind of building it together. Um, this is a real winemaker's wine. Definitely that Skinzy number. Super pineapple-y, like super like golden circle fresh out the tin pineapple vibe. Ooh. Also a little bit funky, like a little bit of that barnyard. I'm thinking this is a natty, so like no sulfur, a little natty, brioche. Um, I've used this I've used this example before on the show where like natural wine and the funk in it is kind of like watching a toddler near a swimming pool. This one's still far enough away that no one's losing their shit over it, but at the same time, definitely keep an eye on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of this. This, this, this really ups the ante. <coughs> Just started to inhale it. It's like apricot jam on toast. Oh yeah. Oh. Price point. It's natty. So I probably need to charge a little bit more. I don't have to use chemicals. Just carry the one. Thirty-two is the answer I've landed on there. And I would like just the one bottle of it today. Only one bottle. Maybe in a couple of months. Maybe even a year. I might uh, be looking more towards six bottles at that point in time. Wine number six, orange wine. This looks like the winemaker has melted butter menthols into a glass. There's some nice kind of apricot vibes to it and some really cool grassy herbaceous things. No, it's not mousy at all. It's great. That's bang on. That's exactly what you want. This is really, really cool. That's great, orange wine. The aroma is present and the sourness on the palate, really driving the palate forward. But here's a really cool thing about this wine. This, I, I believe, would be a completely no sulfur, hands-off uh, winemaking style of probably, perhaps, the highest, highest order. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, dude, great. This is sick. This is awesome. Yeah, this is excellent. This is my favorite orange wine that we've tried on the show. Love the complete lack of filtration here. Like, it just, it's just so inviting, that color. How do you not just go, that looks delicious? This looks delicious. For me, three bottles is really good because I'll probably have a lot of fun with the first one. I'd be able to grab a uh, bunch of mates probably share that second one. And then the third one, I see how these things actually develop in the cellar. I'm gonna guess high because it deserves it because that is bloody excellent. I'm gonna go 50 bucks a bottle because orange wines can be a little bit more expensive and it's orange and blended and yummy. Yeah, that's the most diverse range in terms of like quality and enjoyment that we've had in a lineup for me for a very long time. But I can't wait for the boys to say that number five is, uh, no, sorry, number four is the best thing that happened since sliced bread and it's incredible and the winemakers should be giving them knighthood or whatever but we'll see what happens welcome back we are doing another six wines this week what did you guys think of this lineup overall i was actually really quite happy with this lineup there was, uh, a, there was a couple of bangers in here it took me on a journey let's start out with wine number three no wine number one um so <laughs> this one just here nice little white number uh i instantly got riesling vibes from this um i thought it was 35 dollars a bottle i hoped it was 35 dollars a bottle yeah i grabbed half a dozen i thought it was 30 bucks i went 12 for 25. Cool. What do we got, Locke? $40. Yeah, fair. It is, is this reason? 
It is Riesling. Is it? it yeah, is. it's Riesling. I've had it. We're going. back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I had this the other day. This is, again, Riesling is the variety that if it's not cold, it doesn't look as good. But I had this at a uh, lock bottle shop, uh, yeah. bottle bar the other day, and I thought it was so good. I, I drank two glasses there and took two bottles home. This wine is fucking awesome. That's exactly what I said when I was drinking it. I said, it's delicious, but if this was like 10 degrees cooler, yeah. 20 degrees, I don't know how much degrees wine needs to be. And but commuter buttons as well, some of the most genuine people <laughs> ever. <laughs> they yeah. are. Yeah. Yeah. Salt of the earth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Would no. not meet a nicer bloke in wine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, delicious wine when it's ripping hot cold, it tastes yeah, like let's... roses, lime cordial, it's super good. Turn the fridge on, let's put it in the fridge. Wine number two. I was intrigued by this one. It didn't give me heaps, and I guessed Tempranillo because I always guess Tempranillo, and it never is, but one day it will be. Uh, this this had something going on. This had something going on. Barnyard? Uh, I, I think uh, my sort of call on it was McCaptain, uh, which is really developed, like long developed um, reduction. Um, yeah, it was. It smelled like bacon. Yes, yeah, this bacony Ooh. sort of burger, burger man, burger yeah. rings thing yeah. you kind of pick up. Look, what do we got? Oh. 51, high-end Mataro or Carignan. Oh, hang on, I think I know what it is. Do you reckon? Do you I reckon? Champlit. Is this Champlit? No. No. What is this? From real wine, so we know it's probably going to be Natty Az. Um, oh. Never heard of it. Ad Libitum? Terrain. Uh, Loire terrain Valley. Loire Valley uh, would be Cab Franc. Quite high alcohol as well. Yeah, probably Cab my... Franc. No. Yeah, no, uh, checks out. Yeah, this is... Um, Pretty bang. This is pretty standard Cabernet Franc, to be honest. Yeah, a little bit wild, a little bit funky, but still pretty tasty. Mm. Wine number three. I All didn't right. taste this one, but I know it's a Chardonnay. Yeah, what made you Chardonnay think it was Chardonnay? Just Didn't the look of it in the glass. But, what, it, you, but you smelt it? You no, 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 no. It was sitting on the counter, and I went, that's a Chardonnay. Don't worry about it. I wanted a dozen. I wanted six. I wanted six. What do we got? Oh, I said 45. And we, $48 Catarado is probably highly unlikely. Yeah, but $48 Petit Chablis is Could probably be. likely. What do we got? Uh, it's Albarino. Albarino, <laughs> the other Petit Chablis. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, it's really good though. Right, spicious. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, very, yeah, I think classic style of, of Albarino. Uh, looking fresh. Yeah, salty, chalky. Yeah, still, as I said in the tasting, still good with fucking oysters. It's, it's Yeah, it's the Spanish uh, Chablis. It's a really weird way to spell Chardonnay as well. <laughs> Number four, you weren't you weren't about, because I, th I was totally about. Far out, what is wrong with you? This is garbage. This is awesome. Dude, dude, I would not give this to my dog. I mean, you wouldn't give alcohol to your dog anyway, but this is awful. I could not believe that you're into this. I'm all about it. It's a te lovely textural Fiano. That smells like dog shit. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. What are you talking I about? Know, I don't know what you're, you're picking up as dog shit or not. You were right in the head, yeah, bro. Yeah, it's, 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 it's reductive, but it blew off. But underneath that, I thought it was a little bit, um, a little bit bland, a little bit dull. I was, I was, I thought it was okay. What do we got? 53. 53. Damn. Six. Definitely Chablis. <laughs> could be, could well Dollars. be. Dude, it's Fiano. Yes, that's right. Chiro Picariello, one of the OGs of Campagna. Fiano Diavolino, rocking. That is metal level Fiano. Yep. And, and regard. You get none of it. I don't, yeah. You get none of it. I'm devastated. It's all for me. I'm devastated. <laughs> yeah, let's chill. No, well, you can have a little bit too. Yeah, well, I, I wanted two bottles. So you buy the dozen, I'll take two. And there we go. Good. Sick. <laughs> yeah. Well I liked it. Anyway, <laughs> moving right along. <laughs> that's that's got to be the most controversial one that we've had. Because oh, probably, you're probably, probably, yeah, because you were dead. You were hard on yeah. it. Henry hates Fiano and his job's coming up for review. Ah. <laughs> this one, I think, has no sulfur in it. It's a little bit brioche and a little bit funky. Wine of the lineup. Ooh, wine loved, wine up. loved Ooh. this wine. What do we got? 36? Great. Yeah, that, that, that's I, good value. I reckon it's, that's I good reckon value. Minimum wines, Cold Chardonnay. Cold Fiano. Fiano? Yeah, bro. Bollocks. Yeah. No. Yeah, bro. Seriously? Fiano. Dude, that's a cool example of Oki Fiano. Like, Easy, I've never, I haven't seen, yeah. nutty. Delicious. Oh, dude, that's brilliant. Yeah, that, natural um, ferment, season punch in the whole bunch press, mature lease for eight months, 20 parts per million sulfur. Yum! Yeah, we need more, we need more Oki Fiano. I know you have uh, some things to say about Oki Fiano. Oh, uh, only, uh, look, I can't talk from too much experience, but I'm coming around to it. I'm seeing what other people are doing with it, and I'm, I'm willing to admit that I can be wrong 
on occasion. <laughs> I think I'm wrong on this occasion. Can you clip that for us, Lockie, please? Yeah, thanks. We'll actually be selling Brendan's I was wrong as a ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> wine number six. Now, for me, this is the best orange wine I've ever had. I am so impressed that you said that. I, I thought that, uh, to be honest, I thought you guys would come out of this slamming the shit out of that wine. No. Nah. And I tasted and I saw why people would, but then I thought, there is actually application for this wine. Yeah, it's delicious. I would... Yeah, well, drinking it. Yeah, well, it's just that, like, it's the time of the day, it's salumi, it's something oh fatty, God. it's very Parisian in, in the way that it's sort of, like, how I would consume it. Yeah. If that's even a thing, like a Parisian way to consume wine. What's yeah. it going to cost us, Locke? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah I reckon. Cool, yeah, yeah, it's definitely import Italian. Shotgun like, taking this, yeah. shotgun taking this one home. Oh, what is Same this? Kind this of is a new one. It's doing It's a new one. It's from Umbria. Umbria. Oh, cool. Terra de Preti. I mean, Vino del Coro. Ribolo. <laughs> Ribolo. Ribolo. Ribolo Giala. Is it? No, it, it says Robolito. Robolito. That's got nothing for us. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's tasty. It's uh, fucking yeah. delicious. <laughs> this That's is killer. By far and away, if, yeah, if you're a little bit unsure about orange wines, you've had a couple in the past that have been like, oh, I don't know, maybe this isn't the wine style for me. Splash out, buy a bottle of this, you will not be disappointed. This is exactly what I've wanted orange wine to be like as an uneducated fool who thinks that smells like dog poop. All right, um, controversial tastings, but at the same we time, were all over the we show. were all over, all over the show. I'm so yeah. glad that we disagree for once. I am really glad that I'm right about this. <laughs> you are right that you like it, yeah. Um, anyway, we'll see you next week, guys. Bye. <laughs>